Hi, welcome to the semantics lecture lab, introducing transitive relations. And by transitive, I'm referring to the syntactic term that involves verbs with more than one argument. Now, when we've seen intransitive verbs, and these verbs have one argument, so applying functional application to them is pretty simple. But when you have more than one argument, what are we going to do? Right, take, for instance, the sentence in one, Becky chased Tom. If chased is a function, then its meaning will rely on two arguments, x chased y or y chased x, and so forth. Now, as it turns out, a function can have as many arguments as you like. And we have different terms for them. We call them n-place functions depending on the n. So one-place function has one argument, two-place functions have two, and so forth. And essentially, a transitive verb is a two-place function. Now, the two arguments have to be ordered because if you have x and y and y and x, those are different uh, propositions and uh, they have different truth conditions. So let's say, let's take y chased x. Now in 2 we have this proposition, we have this uh, function, I'm sorry, and the function is uh, you know, from the Cartesian product of the domain and the domain to the set of 1 and 0, and then for any ordered pair in the domain, then uh, f of that ordered pair will equal 1 if and only if the second member chased the first member. And we can turn this into a lambda expression. So lambda ordered pair xy uh, chased of that ordered pair. Right? And it will stand and that, that value condition will stand in for one if y chased x and zero otherwise. Now that works out really well and you'll see that in the literature a lot. But you'll usually see it on the philosophy side. Uh, because when you try to build the semantics directly off the syntax, you can't really do that. You can't really have an expression like three. And the reason is because the two arguments don't merge at the same time. And if they don't merge at the same time in the syntax, they don't in the semantics. So you look at a tree like four, that's the syntactic representation of our sentence in one. And uh, you can't really make that work with the denotation in three. So how do we turn our two-placed function into something that fits this tree? Well, there's a process that's called currying. Now, currying will take a two-placed function and break it into a sequence of one-placed functions. And in fact, it works with any place, it will, but it will, any number of uh, arguments it will always break it down into a series of one-place arguments. So for instance, uh, you can see here in the examples in the handout, but I'll show you an example here. Let's take, now, let me show you an example of that. Let's take the, the predicate is taller than. So x is taller than y. And in this case, we have a is taller than b, b is taller than c. Right? So if we had our function, let's call it function t, and we plugged in a and b, then we would get 1. <coughs> Excuse me, we would get 1 because a is taller than b. And then we would get uh, you know, b is taller than c, and a is taller than c, and so forth. But then we would get, uh, but if we switch the order, we get a different result. So if we switch it to b, a, that's 0, because b is not taller than a. And the same for C and A and so forth. So we can write that like this and we fill it out. And we can write it as a mapping as well. So A, B, B, A, B, C, and so forth. So if we plug the ordered pair, if we take these as a pair and we plug them in, in that order, first A, then B, then we get 1, because A is taller than B. And if we plug in B first, we get 0 because b is not taller than a. But if we took b and c, and we plug that in, we would get 1, and so forth. Right, and that works. That works as a function. But it doesn't work with the syntax. And with the syntax, we have to curry it. So if we curry this, then we get a different result. So instead of plugging in, let's say, b, the ordered pair b, a, we just plug in b. Or we just plug in a. And then that will get us a function. 
Well, what is the function? Well, the function is what happens when we plug in something else. So if we plugged in a, that would be 0, because a is not taller than a. If we plug in b, that would be 1. And if we plug in c, that would be 1. Whereas if we did b, we would get 0, 0, and 1. And then for c, we'd get 0, 0, and 0. But it works like that. You take an argument, the first argument, and then you get a brand new function, and then you get plug in the second argument. And that's how that that's how currying works. And it gets the same results. So what how does that work with our verb? Well, once we curry a verb, uh, we've broken it down into two functions. So the first function takes an argument and it gives you another function. And that function will take its own argument, and eventually. Uh, since we're dealing with characteristic functions, eventually we'll get down to a 1 or 0. And that's what we see in 5, where the denotation of chaste is the function such that if you give it uh, for any x in the domain, f of x will equal a function from the set of functions from one uh, domain to 1 and 0. And then if you plug a y into that, then you get 1 if and only if y chaste x. It's a little confusing. Uh, especially with all these terms flying around and functions here and there and the way that we have to write them out. But if you use the lambda notation, it's a lot easier to deal with. Because in 6, we have the denotation in lambda. That's a, in lambdas, that's equivalent to phi. Lambda x dot lambda y dot chaste x of y. Uh, chaste x y. Right? It's very simple. And chaste x y is an abbreviation for 1 if y chased x and 0 otherwise. So we have our sentence, and we have its LF. Right? That's in 7. Now we uh, build from the bottom up, so we'll start at the verb phrase. We have the verb denotation, the terminal nodes, and we have the noun and uh, the denotation of Tom, also through terminal nodes, and then non-branching nodes, and we see that here in 8. And we end up with this uh, function then. So we have two arguments, lambda x and d, and the y and d, and we're only plugging in tom. So what happens? So we have lambda x and d, lambda y and d, chaste x, y. And we're going to plug in tom. Okay, so we do the same process as we did before. We find the leftmost lambda argument, and we find every instance of the variable in the value condition. Then we plug it in and we replace every instance with Tom. And that's it. Then we get rid of the agreement, we get rid of the argument, and what are we left with? Everything to the right of this dot. Lambda y and d chased Tom y. And that is the v, that's the meaning of the VP. And then that's a function. And now we will input that to our subject. Um, sorry. And now <laughs> we will input the subject into that. Right? And we do the same process. Now we have Becky. Do the same process. Leftmost, replace every instance of that variable in the value condition with the argument. Get rid of the lambda expression get rid of the argument, and we have Chase, Tom, Becky, and that's it. And this is an abbreviation of 1 if Becky Chase Tom and 0 otherwise. That's how transitives work, and uh, that's in general how uh, we will take uh, syntactic objects or linguistic objects that have more than one argument and deal with them by decomposing them via currying into a function and uh, from a function with multiple arguments to a series of functions with just one. And that's going to be a very powerful tool for us uh, throughout the semester.